Hi, this is Mark with Accepted, and our team is so excited to be able to serve LMEA this year by streamlining the entire application, audition, and review process. What we're going to do today is I'm just going to give you an overview of the entire experience, both from what students will go through as they sign up their, and submit their applications and go through the audition experience online, and then also what you will go through as you go through the review process as well. So what we're going to do is first we're going to go through the process for students as they submit their materials online. And it's all going to start here on this page. And this is called a landing page right now. And our team is currently developing LMEA's landing page. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a demo sample, a landing page environment here for to our experience today. And on this page, we'll customize this for you all. So this will have your pictures, have your information. We can connect social media. Any information that we want applicants to know about, we'll put here on the landing page. And this page is also what gets listed in our directory right here. So applicants can find us directly in Accepted, uh, where you'll be part of the 700 plus organizations across the globe who utilize Accepted. And you can also link uh, directly to your landing page from your own website as well. And once students are here, um, they will go over where it says start an application. And so this demo environment is set up for a program with multiple disciplines in here, uh, such as a school or a university. But what we're going to do is we're going to set this up where we, each district will have their own drop down menu and each program will have their own additional application in here as well. And so if we go into one of these applications, as an example, you can see the guidelines that do come up. One thing I do want to point out here is for support, we do have two support teams at Accepted. Um, one support team is to serve you all uh, to be able to help with the setup of the landing page as we're doing, the applications, the rubrics, or anything on the back end of the system, we're here to assist you. Um, but students will also have their own support team. So if they have questions about uh, their application or submitting materials, they can reach out to us directly and we can help. I'm going to log in here as a student to go through what they will see as they go through their application registration process. And so these applications can be set up to match whatever it looks like. Um, it can be unique to each district and each program as well. So the first thing that can come up are program eligibility requirements. You don't have to use this, but you can use this to make sure that applicants are in the right spot. But assuming those are all true, they can go into the application. And so whatever information you would need to collect here as they sign up for their audition time or day, um, you can put here. Um, this is just to show you types of questions we can ask, um, such as just name, you can use short answer questions, drop downs, essay, whatever information you need as well. And you'll be working with our account relations team as they continue to build out these applications and rubrics for you. We can also collect any additional media files um, that you need. Um, we can take these in. If there's forms that need to be uploaded, you can see the different file types we can take into the system as well. And that's really going to be it from the applicant side. Um, they'll be signing up for their uh, selecting their audition day. They can actually select their audition time slot as well. And once their information is complete, they'll just go here um, to make sure that their information is correct. And this is where they will go to pay and submit. And once they submit that application, that's all they'll need to do on their end until the audition day. So now I'm going to switch over and log in as a reviewer, as an administrator, to take a look at the back end of the system. And so here, this page that we see right now, uh, this is called the submission table. This is where all those completed applications and registrations are going to populate. This table right here, um, this can be, it's very malleable based on whatever you'd like to see. You can add and remove columns from the application. You can see the ratings. Um, you can make those customizable as well. These are also all searchable and sortable as well. So if you like to search by score, for example, you can certainly see that. You can also see any in progress applications for each program. Um, this is especially helpful because you can also use, we have a messaging system built into the platform here. So you can send out mass messages through the system to let people know um, that the deadline to register is coming up uh, to make sure that they register, get everything set up in time in order to have their audition uh, day set. All these messages go to their accepted profile and to their email address that they use to sign up as well, and they can respond from either. In terms of users and administrators on this side of the platform, there's no limit on those. Um, to add someone, if you need to add a reviewer uh, to your team, you can just simply add their name, email, and select their unique permission level. Um, whether they're account owner, it can make changes, or if they're a reviewer, um, you can set their unique permission levels there. And you can also have um, people assigned to specific programs. So for example, if you only want someone to see the applications and to review the auditions for a specific district, then they will just be assigned to applications that come into that district. 
Taking a look at one of the applications here, so you can see what it will look like for each student. Um, here we're looking at Clarence's application and his page. So we'll quickly go through these tabs up top. Um, as we can see here, we can set up a multi-stage process. So students will be able to go through and submit their application and their audition for the district level. And then as they advance to the next stage, um, if they do so, um, we can create new adjudication and review rubrics and new reviewers will be able to go in and view their application and submission at that time. You can, of course, see Clarence's completed application here. Um, you can see any of those media files that are uploaded with their application. Messages, you can, of course, send one-off messages here to uh, Clarence if you have questions about his application. And then we do have a scheduling tool here as well. And so this scheduling tool is going to be the backbone of what we use for these live virtual auditions. So just as if we were doing this in person, we can create what those audition day schedules would look like. So for example, if we have different time slots here, Clarence is currently scheduled at 1.20 p.m. If you'd like to move him to 3 o'clock, it's available. Click of a button, he's now scheduled for 3 p.m. As we go through these auditions and you're watching the video or watching them live, um, you can utilize this tool on the right. This is our adjudication tool, and we'll match whatever the rubrics are that you have for each district and program here using the tools that you see on the screen. So whether it's sliding scales, notes, drop downs, whatever those rubrics look like, you'll be able to go through the review process right here and accept it as you watch those auditions and those videos. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of the platform itself and how the scoring and review process will look. Uh, but now we'll take a look at Audition Room, which is the live virtual audition component and platform that will be tying into this for those actual audition days. So here we're going to take a look at Audition Room, which is a new platform from Accepted that allows you to conduct live virtual auditions online. It essentially incorporates Zoom into the application platform that we just took a look at. And so to simplify uh, this process today, we're going to take a look at a mock-up of it um, to be able to see what the process looks like, again, both for students and for you all as you go through the review process. And so for students, it's the same process. They will go to your landing page. They will submit their application. They can schedule themselves if you'd like. And then when they do that, they're going to receive instructions via email. Some of the instructions will be from Accepted about internet connectivity, browser, other information like that to make it a good experience. And then you can also add in information about the actual audition day as well. There will also be a link in that email to take them directly to their live virtual audition lobby. And that's what this page represents here. And the heart of this is really trying to recreate the in-person audition experience as best as we can online. And so here you can add in additional information for the actual audition day. There'll be a checklist for students to make sure that they have everything ready to go before their actual audition. So they can actually test their microphone. It will load up the Zoom, check your camera, check your microphone. If they have any questions, they can go here as well. There will also be a spot to request staff help. So if they do have any questions, they can go ahead and it will load up a chat with someone from your team to answer any questions and make sure they are good to go beforehand. Here in the lobby, they also have the ability to join a lobby video. What the lobby video is, it's essentially a Zoom call here in the lobby um, where you can have members from your team to welcome students, answer any questions, um, to try to recreate what that in-person experience would be if they were all coming together to audition in person. And then in this example, we have Abby here. When she's getting ready for her audition, and she's next in line here, she can go ahead and join the waiting room. And that's going to let reviewers in that room know that she's here and she's ready to go. So when that happens, it will load up her Zoom window here. When the reviewers or the moderator is ready, they will admit Abby into the audition room. And here, when they're in the audition room, it's a standard Zoom call for them. And so you can see that any of the reviewers who want to watch the audition live will be here. Um, and then you'll see Abby here ready for her audition. Abby will have all of her normal Zoom functions at the bottom. She can mute herself. She can hide her video. Um, if you need to do any screen shares, that's an option that you can do as well. Um, you'll also see that these are all recorded, and so these will automatically be recorded, so those reviewers will be able to go and view them afterwards. I'll show you in a second where those are located and what that process looks like. Um, but then when Abby is all finished, she'll go ahead and she'll leave the Zoom call. You can have a thank you message here for her, and then at that point, she's free to go. Um, she can also go back to the lobby if she wants to jump back in the lobby video or um, ask any questions, um, but at that point, she would be free to go. So with that, let's go ahead over to what the reviewer experience looks like here in Audition Room. 
As a reviewer or administrator, you'll see on this back end of the system, similar to what we were looking at um, in the application platform, um, there will be a new section down here with the video camera for audition room. And so here, if you click there, you'll be able to see all the audition rooms that are going on for that day. And so in this example, you can see here, um, this session um, is attached to a schedule that will be created. So as we create what those each audition day schedule looks like, it'll be attached to an audition room um, that we were seeing in the application platform. You can see the different uh, reviewers and administrators assigned to each room. So you can see the adjudicators assigned to it who will have access. You'll see the, someone is a lead adjudicator. That's essentially the Zoom room host who will let students in, exit them out as well. Ambassadors are people, if you just need someone in the lobby uh, as, as to answer questions, they can be in the lobby video, um, but they do not have access to the auditions or the review experience. And then moderators will be like your account owners who need to make changes in the moment. If we go ahead and join the room video here, you can see the schedule. Um, in this example, there, there aren't time slots here. This is a block schedule type example. Um, so when we're ready as a reviewer or a moderator, we can join that room video. Um, that's gonna launch the Zoom window for us here as a reviewer. And so when we are all ready to go, if you're watching it live, um, you can go ahead and we see Abby is up here first. She's indicated she's ready to go. So that lead adjudicator, that moderator, will admit Abby into the audition room. And then when she's ready for her audition, we'll go ahead and start the timer for her and she can begin her audition. As that audition's happening, um, if you're watching it live, you have full access to see Abby's application, any of those media files. You can pull up the adjudication tools here so you could go and review Abby in real time. We do have a private adjudicator chat built into a, a audition room as well. So if the, our adjudicators on watching it live, they can communicate with each other in real time outside of Zoom. When Abby is all done with her audition, we'll go ahead and stop the timer for her. When we hit next, that's gonna exit her out of the audition room. You see any of those reviewers are still here. And then Colleen is up next. And when she is ready to go, we'll go ahead and admit her into the audition room to begin the process all over again. All of these auditions again will be recorded so you have the ability to go back and see each of those auditions and you can go back into the application platform to be able to review them at your leisure as well. So I hope this is helpful just to see an overview of the accepted platform of how to utilize Audition Room and also what students will be going through as they go through the experience as well. If you have any questions about this, please don't hesitate to reach out to our team. We're happy to help. Hello, everyone. Hello. How's everybody? I don't know if anyone can hear us or see <laughs> us because we can't see anybody but us. But if you'd like to ask a question, please put it in a chat and we'll try to answer it as best we can. Cool. You can hear us. Yay. Hi. We don't know who all's in the room, so. Well, I see um, John and I we see. Can see we can see some names on the chat. Yeah. On the chat, we don't see anybody's faces. There's Scotty. All is good. Okay, good cool. Deal. So a couple things that I took note of during the video for everybody to know is that the student registration, um, the first one of the first things they showed you, just know that the student registration, when they go on accepted to register for their audition, that it will be very similar to what we've always used. Same information, um, name, address, school, band director's name, etc. All that stuff will be on the um, student registration page, along with the Probably the stuff that we would have also asked for for second round, just so we don't have to have them do it again. Uh, I would imagine we would include T-shirt size there. Might as well do that up front too, and things like that. So we're gonna. Our goal is to make the registration process as simple as possible and get as much information as we can 
in the initial registration so we're not chasing information down. Also, where they showed you where the forms and things that would be available on the accepted page for the students, if uh, we don't, if we aren't able to include the media release and the uh, student release and information release form on the uh, registration page for since if we need a signature as a documentation, we'll probably put those forms in that area where they, where they showed you they could click on the forms to download the forms and print them out and mail them to us. Um, the next thing that I made note of um, was that so there'll be a student registration from December 14th through December 21st, there'll be a seven day window for them to register for their audition for jazz band, band, uh, orchestra winds, and choir. All students will go in a seven day window to register. After that date, Greg and Ronnie and I will have the uh, ability to know how many people are auditioning for each activity uh, and how many people are auditioning for each instrument, voice, Etc. So we can have them set up time slots for the auditions um, for the students to go choose from. Once we have the numbers in, we'll be able to send that information to accepted, and they'll create the time slots for the students to go re choose for their audition between January seventh and January ninth. So January so January January seventh, eighth, and ninth, students will go back into accepted to select their audition time on the date. So if they want to if they have a if they have a swim meet at noon and they have to do it early, they need to pick a nine o'clock time. This way we're not assigning it and then having to move kids around later. They're gonna go on and pick their own time and they need to be there for their time. So um but that'll be totally up to them and you won't have to be involved in that. Either you won't have to be calling Ronnie or myself or Greg saying, hey, I got a kid that has to take, uh, you know, this this test today. They can't make it till 1130. Well, it won't matter because the kid's going to pick their own time. So all that's going to be taken out of the way. Uh, for jazz and first round and auditions for district level and Greg's choir auditions for band and choir, all first round auditions and jazz auditions will be live online. There'll be a live streamed event where there'll be a, the proctor that would normally be in the room with the kid at the audition site will just be there virtually for them to do their audition. And the judges will also be in there in the room for first round auditions. Jazz, we haven't had auditions uh, live with judges on the first recording in years. So this way we're going to do it uh, like we normally do. But first round, Choir and band are going to be almost exactly like we've done in the past, with the exception that the kid's not going to be in a room physically with someone else. They'll be in a virtual room together. Um, and then after that point, I'm, I'm almost done, Greg, and I'm going to shut up. Trust, trust no, no, I just, I just wanted to jump in just one time and, and say, okay. please make sure that, that the students tr don't use their cell phone. Yeah, you we might want to. Yeah. We'll go in. Yeah, yeah, we should get into details for that. The other, and so after the first round auditions are done, just like in the in the past, the direct the district directors are going to take their districts list and have after their judge and have the scores, they're going to send their allotments to Ronnie and Greg, or whatever, however it works, whatever how many you're supposed to send to second round, you're going to send the list of second round kids to the division chairs, and then the recordings from the first round auditions will be sent to a new set of judges to be judged for second round to make the all state group. Like now what Greg just said about um, not using your phone. The reason you don't want to use your phone is because part of the audition process is sight reading. So the students will get to the sight reading portion and the proctor will announce the normal You'll have 30 seconds to look this over, yada, yada, yada. And the proctor is going to click on the site reading, and it will appear on the student's screen. So if they're looking at a, a cell phone screen, which is much, it'll be much smaller to read. So they will definitely want to be on a computer screen 
uh, to be able to see the sight reading clearly. The other thing that uh, about techni technicalities that they need to know is for jazz and for choir, there are play along tracks that they will be performing to. They're going to have to go on prior to the audition date and download those audition tracks from the LMEA music.org website for Allstate. So the jazz, all the jazz materials are already on the website. I'm pretty sure Greg said the choir materials are on there. So the student will have to have a way to play the recordings that, so the, the accompaniment behind them while it's being done. Because if we were to do it and we were to play it from the proctors, there's going to be like a delay between the music getting to the kid and then them recording and then we'll end up having a little mismatch. So if the student plays it in the room that they're in, what they're hearing, the recording will pick all of it up, the, the accompaniment and the student playing. Um, so that'll be uh, that'll be a very important thing for the jazz and vocal kids. All right. So now we have questions. So if you guys want to hit some of that. Well, I'm looking at Michelle's question and Tim's question. I think we can address that real quickly. In our meeting that we had with Accepted, they said that they would take a school check, but what they would do is they would give each director their own code for that particular school. So you could gather up all of that and take care of the registration and pay for it so that the kid didn't have to pay for it. I hope that answered it. And I see John has, what are the registration dates? Is that the deadline they register on accepted? Right. Uh, the registration dates, uh, I believe, are late. December 14th. 14th yeah. through 21st. Yeah. I'll type it in there so they can see it. Twenty twenty. <laughs> <laughs> And then cool. sign up for a time slot will be on um, January 7th through 9th. Correct. Yeah, Michelle, each student will need to have the ability to play the track behind them. Uh, that's what Lee was talking about, having lag. And those are on the website, and you can download those if if you go to it and right click on it, it'll say that you can actually save it as an MP3. Uh, and if you have a, if you run into a problem, please let me know and I'll help you get all of that taken care of. The uh, registering and paying for your students. Um, so what's going to happen is if you have a list of your students that want to register and you want to pay for that with a school check or a booster club check or whatever, you can do that. You'll need to let us, you'll need to find, work with accepted, and they'll, um, and they'll um, send you codes for your kids to register with. So when your student goes to pay, it'll say, pay with a credit card. If you're having them pay for their own edition, they'll pay with the credit card. Your kids, it'll say, pay with a credit card or use school code so that way they'll be able to uh register without any problems michelle um it, it's this there there's also a fee waiver right yes i'm yeah. sorry yeah. so if, a, if, if you have students that just can't afford and all the uh, accepted portion or can't afford it um and they're on free lunch or whatever the the uh the thing is that allows them to get it um you can click on that, and then you, you, those students would be sent to another to another location for a form to add, enter their information and why they would uh, would need the the financial the, fee uh, waiver. Financial right? fee waiver, yeah, and uh, accepted will help you out on that end. All right, let's uh, reading from Michelle again. So, are you not going to be able to do the tracks like we have before? that Fran made, and what about the sight reading tracks? All of those tracks that have been made in the past are on the LMEA Music website, and they can be downloaded, and you can use those for your kids. Um, and we can have more discussion about that later on. 
And then Tim says, you say that there will be a first round where students audition live on Accepted, then a second round where the first round recordings are forwarded. Who will run each first round site? That will be the district director. If it is locally proctored, will site reading be built into the program? Yes. yes. And the and the chairman are going to send the site reading to that. And I believe, Ronnie, you can already talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. The site reading is it just actually actually has been been writ, written and the district directors will will have well, be, be able to control all of all of that. And it'll be it will be uh through it through the accepted format and and it'll be downloaded to the program right so it'll we'll, share the screen we'll send the, right. all of us will be sending the site reading materials to accepted so all they all the proctor will have to do is click on it and it will appear for that student yeah. title one schools can also apply for a fee waiver um I'm not sure if they want it done by individual or by uh, if I remember, school. I remember oh. him talking about their FAFSA application. Like, yeah, let me um, I'm gonna write that down and ask them next week. But like uh, getting back to what Michelle was saying specifically for the choral directors, when you download, you need to download the audition track for the particular kid. If he's say he's a second tenor, he will need to download the second tenor audition track. He'll also need to download the second tenor sight reading so he can put them all together. And what I had talked about earlier and, and may do is make him pile all of it together and just have it to where you can just download one thing. I, it, I may try to do that over the Thanksgiving holiday. All right. Michelle says we were originally told it was title one schools were covered. Yeah. I don't think we're debating that. I think we're trying to figure out if it was per school or kids in the school. Right. Yeah. Kids in a title one school, yeah. et cetera. Can you go over the payment directions again? Do we have to pay for a check for all the kids or do the parents' kids pay online individually and accept it? So that'll be done by case by school or it depends. Case -case basis. If, yeah. if the band director wants the parents to pay for it, the kid the kids will be able to go online and pay and register for their own audition and pay for it themselves with a credit card. If the school or the booster club is going to be writing a check, we'll work out they'll They'll, They'll get a code. code to do that when they go register. And some some kids that don't have a computer at home, some directors may have to register the kid at, for them. And then you would get the code that way, too. And that also presents something for the band side of it. If you're a band director and you have kids that are going to be auditioning for percussion, you're going to have to have the audition at a band room. On site. On site. Yeah. So you have percussion equipment. Unless a kid owns a marimba and a bunch of other things. Nice set of timpani. <laughs> nice set of timpani. Does that make sense, BJ? Cool. All right. Good deal. So the, the equipment that the students are going to use to play the accompaniment tracks um, need to um, probably be more than just the stuff coming straight out of their computer. They might want a little bit bigger set of speakers so they can hear it while they're playing and, this, and the judge can hear it through the recording. So if, um, if, you, if your kids don't have that, you might want to talk to them in advance about how to do that. Uh, I don't think they need anything expensive. I think they just need to be able to hear what they're singing to. And that the judges, the recording will be heard while they're singing. I would encourage your kids to practice recording themselves with, through their computer and then going back and listening to it and seeing if it works for them when they hear it. So if they practice at home, put on your recording, some, some recording thing, you know, whatever you have it on your computer, just see how it works. And if you can hear it and get a good balance, 
if the kids try doing that before they get to the audition, chances are it's going to work a lot better than if they don't try it in advance at all. Okay, reading again. Elisa, would iPads be acceptable? Um, I think iPads would be acceptable if, if the screen's big enough. Um, yeah, the, the newer the newer ones. The newer ones should sure. be. The new ones. And so you're also talking about what kind of microphone. I, I think we discussed at one of our previous meetings that it's probably not something you want to use earbuds for the kids. <clears throat> You want to actually have it come out live. Michelle, um, it would be great if we had a demo available in order to teach the technology. I've had to do that with every platform I've used in my classroom this year. Um, I think this is, Michelle, this may just be, yeah, I can say maybe teach the process. The, the, the main thing is making sure the kids understand that it's a twofold process. They're going to sight read, and that'll be taken care of with the proctor. And then they're going to sing the piece just like they would normally do. Um, but if it's something that we need to put together, something of a how-to, it, it, I'm sure we we could find a way to do that. Probably put it and post it on the LMEA pit website. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we've we've discussed that. We just haven't. Our our home site, our registration page isn't even built yet. So going walking. Couldn't have make it a video to walk people through registering and all that. We can't do that until all that's done. But if, as soon as they have something available that it's possible for us to make a demo video, uh, we'll jump all over it, I'm sure. Uh, Brenda Castillo, how much time will a band and choir student have to prepare their sight reading piece? The normal amount of time for uh, the choir side, it's the same minute that they've always had, using the same the same track that we've used with Fran's magical voice and Ronnie, it would be the same for band, right? I think, I think band is generally like 30 seconds only. Yeah. Well, yeah. Jazz band and band are usually 30 seconds. Okay. Antonio says for that registration code, should we as the individual director reach out to accept it or should I reach out to my district directors? Um, and no, it's okay. You don't have, if you're a first year teacher, these are the questions that have to be asked. If so, everybody in this process is first year teacher. Yeah, yeah, we're all first year. <laughs> Lee, did, do we need to have them go to straight to accepted? Honestly, I don't recall. I need to. I'll look into that and get back to you. And I we'll think post it on the LBA page. To, yeah, the district director can't go. You are a Title One and absolve. Right. So may eventually. This is going to be accepted. school by school basis, yeah. and will probably be through accepted. Right. Um, and that, right. the school can pay through a credit card too to accept it yeah. um so but I, i'm not sure how they want to handle checks um from a school uh if you'll have to send it in advance and then they'll send you the codes or what um but that will have to be done well in advance all right so mark has a good question so i'm just going to read this one he says so is it okay to set up an audition room at the band room or the choir room for people who are challenged technology wise my thing is, is if it's safe and you can do it socially distance and keep people safe and you want to have all the kids come to your band room or all the kids come to your choir room, that see, I, I don't have a problem with that. See, I think that that's actually a good idea. And then, yeah. then you know, I know like where I teach in, in Kaplan, for me and Parrish, we're not a, we, we're not allowed to have, let anyone on campus that's from off campus. So no one, I couldn't, I couldn't have somebody else from another school even come to my band room, you know? So. Right. I, I would suggest I think it's a, it, finding out who those uh -huh. kids are. And if you can, if you can do it at your school, great. Um, yeah. For those kids. If not, if you, if you can't do that, maybe they can go to a kid, another kid's house and do their audition or work something out, but we're going to stay out of that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> We're, we're not going to, that's going to be as a district school, a case by case basis, but we would highly encourage whatever you got to do to help make it happen for your kids. Do that. Sharon but each says, could each local band director could help. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'm just, just saying right each, 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 uh, each band director could actually help with set up the auditions for their students, you know, on, on audition day, you know? And the, and the technology usually in the schools is going to be better than some some of the kids' equipment that they would have at their at their home. 
Well, I, for me, I'm probably going to set something up for my kids and just have them come up there. If we're in school, I mean, if, if we're if we're in school, and I'm probably going to be able to bring my kids up there. Um, Sharon, you said, could you all put together a, a frequently asked question sheet for us to post on the website? Because um, these are great questions. Yeah, I'm not sure if we can capture all these and go back and post them. Uh, but again, this meeting is being recorded so people could go back and watch it again. Um, Michelle, our district is trying to work it out so that each homeschool make their room available for these instances. Yeah, I think that's that's cool. Again, the whole idea is to make it to where we can have an audition that's safe for the teacher and the kid mm -hmm. and give them a semblance <clears throat> of normalcy. Tim says, I think if you can do it at a school, you could at least control the quality of the mic and the bandwidth. True. Yeah. I mean, to, to be honest with you, some kids have these, these video game systems. They've got better equipment on their house hooked up to do that than they do at some recording studios. So, you know, it'll, it's totally all by case by case basis. But yeah, you can control it more at a school. It'll probably be quieter at school because the dog and the cat and the TV won't be in the house at the same time. Also, speaking of the TV at the same time, uh, my house, we are streaming TV house. We don't have cable. We stream everything. Um, I We totally recommend when the kid is online doing their audition, don't have any video game streaming, don't have any movie streaming, that just try to let recommend to the family that for this five, ten minutes, whatever it is, these kids need to have everything else, the, the, all the bandwidth that the house should be dedicated to that student's audition, if possible. And if you're going to do it at your school, make sure that you go and contact your IT people so that they can give you a straight port because you don't want to have them trying to say, well, this is coming in from someplace and they throttle it or they block it all together on the day. They need to know that this particular site is a trusted site and you're going to be able to send this straight to the people. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a conversation you need to have with the, your technology person at your school and your IT people for your parish so that they give you, you know, the best opportunity to record your kids. All right. Elisa's right. Band directors need to be sure to let percussionists have access to their band rooms and the equipment. That is true. Uh, John, are there any recommendations on good external mics that are good for band instruments? Let me, I'll, I'll throw this in there. If you, if you're a member of the, the, the never ending Facebook band directors page, um, they've got people that have asked these kind of questions for Google Classroom and for virtual learning already. And they've got lots, lots of opinions on what's a good microphone to use for virtual teaching band and stuff like that. I would recommend checking that out because um, people have put a lot of different recommendations on there at different price points. So if we make one recommendation, you know, you know it, it's really up to the person and what they can afford um, to do. I know that like Pers Personas, I believe makes like an, an, uh, an adapter that you can put in like an, you know, in, in, in an iPad and a serial port or whatever. So you can attach, uh, external, really good external mics. And I believe that thing is, it's under a hundred bucks, you know, and that that's good for recording full band sessions too. Well, I mean, any any audio interface that you plug into the computer right. that's going to have an XLR output is going to allow you to put whatever kind of microphone you want on. Right. So for those of you people that are used to recording into a computer, this is just going to be adding the visual content that, that goes to be assessed. Um, what happens if there's if there's a technical problem, Tim, if there's like pixelation or sound drops out? Uh, we've kind of addressed that. Lee, you want to? Yeah, so the accepted will have, um, will have, I don't know what to call them, will have their people available all day. 
for those kind of issues. So if there's an issue, from what I understand, if a student's having trouble making it work, they'll be able to click on like a trouble button or something like that, having trouble button, and it will take them to an accepted person who help walk them through the issue to make sure, try to correct it um, at that point. And I think then they would then move to the end of the queue, but still be able to audition right. and they'll work their way back up. So, right. Uh, and Mark is asking Lee yes. if the jazz auditions are still one and done. So basically, Mark, the only thing changing about jazz auditions is they won't be uh, coming to us to do that. They're going to do it from their house. Or, I mean, if you want to do it at your school, that's fine, too. Um, but this is going to be – it'll be a live proctor like we're recording it normally. Um, but they'll be able to do it from home, and we'll be able to record it that way. Uh, in case kids can't get to school or if they shut us all down again for some crazy reason, um, then we'll, we'll, um, but nothing else is going to do. The judges won't be in the room, uh, when we record the jazz auditions, but there'll be a proctor in there to start the sight reading, which is why we're doing it this way and not letting them record. It's all just to protect the sight reading. So. Also, for band and jazz auditions, and I'm, I don't know how vocal works with this, but uh, for students who are adult, uh, auditioning on multiple instruments, so if a saxophone player is going to audition on alto and barry, they need to register for two auditions like they would any other year. Okay? But it, it's not going to be, you know, $20 one time. It's going to be $20 plus the fee both times. Because they're getting two set, because it's two totally separate auditions, and the accepted format will recognize it as two different things. So when they go and audition for jazz, it's going to say uh, when they click on it, LMA auditions, jazz, sa alto saxophone, and then so they'll set that whole thing up for alto saxophone. They need to totally do the entire form again to do tenor saxophone or barry saxophone or whatever is that if they're auditioning on trumpet and piano. It's two totally separate things. They need to fill out the form completely for both auditions. And I would assume that's the same for kid doing who's going to do clarinet and bass clarinet. They would need to do two full <clears throat> full things because when we sort the information, it's going to go to the, the bass clarinet player that made the audition. <laughs> and all their information is going to come up. And if it's blank on the other one, we're going to have to go search and it's not going to be as possible to make that happen. Okay, Michelle asked, the only person that the student will see is the proctor, correct? Um, when you saw the video earlier, it said that the person in, in the room could be shown. We haven't discussed that. We did say earlier on that we're going to have to make sure that the right person's in the room. Nobody wants a kid to walk in there and say, I'm number 725, and then a college student get in there and, and sing their audition. So we're going to have to be able to see and make sure that the person that is auditioning we want to have a true audition, um, but I don't know that the judges necessarily have to be seen. Um, well, I asked that to the accepted people, and when they're in the room, the judges will be able to see the person, and the kids will be able to see the judge. I asked if there's any way we can make it squiggly, and they right. were gonna, they're looking into that for us to see if that's possible. But the judges will be in the room for district and district band and choir. The judges will be in the room. They won't, won't be behind a sheet. And for second round, they'll all be out of state judges. So that yeah. there shouldn't be, there won't, shouldn't be any bias. Right. Okay. Um, Tim says no different than a monitor situation. Pretty much. Yeah. Going to be very similar. The, the the reason that we're trying to do it this way, and, and we've had numerous discussions with everybody, is to make it as close to our live auditions as we possibly can. And look, this is a crazy situation we're all in, and we're doing this so the kids have an opportunity to audition for Allstate because we don't know when this is going to end, and if we don't try to do something. They wouldn't even get this opportunity. So this is about making this happen for the kids, uh, regardless of what um, what we're in as far as um, stage one, stage two, phase one, phase two, what phase we're in. We're, 
This is we're going to make this happen, and it's going to have to happen this way. Because let's say we get to the end of December, and oh, nobody needs to do this anymore, which I thought was going to happen, but we still are going to go through this way because this is how we've set it up to do it now. So. All right, Michelle, we ought to scramble our judges from district to district. So if the judges are seeing the kid, there is no way they know who they are or where they are from. Um, yeah, but in the, that situation, it might be, that we make sure that the judges that we have, I mean, we have to trust the integrity of our judges that they're professional. And they're going to judge what they see and hear. Right. Um, First round judges are going to be up to. Yeah. It's up to y'all. Yeah. So you're going to have to find, find somebody that doesn't know, them, you know, or do what I mean, just do the best you can is all we can ask. Mark, the Mark's uh, Mark, your question about the audition times. I think, um, the goal is to stick on the same kind of thing we've done in the past with, I don't know if it's six, seven minutes, whatever it is for, for the audition. The jazz has been about 10 minutes. So the jazz auditions will be set up by the time of the play along audition track that's already on the website. So there's a, there's a link on the website to the actual track that the kids will play along for the audition. They can take, they can download it and practice it. It's going to be the exact same thing. Um, the only thing that might change is how we have the kids identify because there won't be a proctor state in the student's district and instrument number. The kid's going to, you know, to say, you know, John Doe, alto sax. <laughs> so that'll be the only thing that'll be different. But other than that, the track is going to be the same. So the, our time slot will be based on the length of that track. And, and then I'm if thinking, they're in the waiting room, they'll just wait, and then we'll go on to the next kid. You know, so hopefully I'm thinking probably that they'll have an identifier as opposed to their name. It'll probably be, I'm number seven fifty five, uh, and we'll know that based on when they log in. But I don't think they're going to say their name um, right. or their school or anything like that. That's going to be yeah. identifiable of them. We'll also probably have to talk to accepted about maybe having like a. Like if the student's audition is six minutes, we may have to have a minute or two transition time to uh, go to the next kid or have the next kid pop up. I don't know how it's going to work. How smooth let that you know change will be from one kid to the next in the room. Um, we'll have to see how that and they, works. And she had talked. The lady from Accepted had talked if there were if there were a technical issue, you know, during someone's audition that they reschedule them at the end, at, at the ending times to make sure that make sure that everybody has a chance to audition, you know, so so they a kid wouldn't be out of an audition slot because they had technical issues. Right. Yeah, Michelle, that, that that's what I'm saying. They they wouldn't necessarily state their name. Oh, yeah. They would be identified by their time slot or the number, the time stamp. Um. BJ, if they're wearing a mask, you may not be able to tell who they are anyway. Uh, I think in this particular instance, they'll be, if they're socially distanced at home, they wouldn't have to wear a they mask. They don't need a mask. There's no mask needed. <laughs> but I mean, I could put one on like right now. Yeah. <laughs> Make you feel like you're back at school. Oh, you are at school, Ron Lee. I am at school. I'm going to a football game when we're done. Oh, exciting. Lucky no. you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I wish we could see people. Well, we were sitting here earlier thinking nobody was going to show up. So for the, the 18, 19, 20 people that are online, thank you for coming and yes, very much. listen to what we have to say. And just, just know this, that... Yes, we this, finished uh, at, uh, at 7. This is a... Uh, fluid situation. So as far as while, while Accepted is developing our pages and stuff like that, and we're getting everything set up, please, um, please um, keep in contact with the LMA yeah. music.org page and the LMA Facebook pages and the Twitter page. We're going to be sending out things are going to change. We're going to let you know when something's available check this out. You need to do that on a regular basis right now. 
uh, prior to these auditions for your kids that are going to be auditioning. Because as we're finding stuff out, like when we had this meeting, uh, I think it was Tuesday or uh, Wednesday with the accepted people. Some things changed. <laughs> so uh, we're doing the best we can to get the information to everybody as quickly as possible. Uh, also, one thing we could talk about for a second was is we actually have the cuts posted, I believe, for the first time since I've been teaching. Actually, we have cuts to the Allstate, official cuts listed for the Allstate band uh, this year, and they're online. So we're trying to make sure that the kids are responsible for, for about half of the music than they normally are because they're, they, they've lost so much instruction time, you know. So those those, those are posted online, and your district director should also have them for you and for those choir people that are online if your district director is a band person there will be their vocal chairman in your area will help with this as well please communicate with your district director so that uh everybody knows that the, what's going on don't sit out there and not ask questions all of our email addresses are on the board web page and we'd be happy to to visit with any of you Patrick is in his pajamas. Lucky Way to go, you. Patrick. No football game. <laughs> Lee, they've asked that you put your mask back on. Uh, I can't take it much more. I'm just I don't I don't know that it's for safety. <laughs> <laughs> she, Sheely's trying to stir the shit. <laughs> I mean, stir, stir the stuff. Stop. Sorry, this, this, Stop. Is a family, <laughs> stir the this is a family program. Red of the, this is being recorded, so you can watch it later on. If you <laughs> trust, if you want to. The mask makes my glasses fog up, so I can't see it. <laughs> ah, Sheely's just kidding. She says you can take it off. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to practice safe streaming. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, have we covered everything, guys? Or? Yeah, I, I think we we have six more minutes. If anybody else has anything that they want to ask, just the biggest important things to know and to remember is January. I mean, December fourteenth through twenty first. All students auditioning for all state honor bands for LMEA all state bands will go in and register for their audition. That's the first one. December 14th to 21st is registration. They won't pick a time then, but they'll register to audition for whatever group they're auditioning for. In January 7th to 9th is when they will go back in and register. And they will get an email from Accepted telling them go back and register for a time once they've done the registration in December. The other things um, to remember were that um, the auditions will be live and for the students doing jazz auditions and choir auditions, please tell them, you can tell them now, go on the website and download the play along, the accompaniment recordings and practice with them. There's no reason they can't practice with them. It's there for that reason. So the more comfortable they are dealing with that, the better. Also, they need to do it at their house and get whatever speakers they're going to use to play along with and start practicing doing that too. So less they have to worry about that day that they've already done 100 times, the better it's going to be for their audition and for everybody else. Okay, Because if we have to sit there and say, no, can you turn it up a little bit more? Can you turn it up a little bit more? We don't want to do that. If they can go in and record themselves on their computer, playing along with the track, and then go back and listen to themselves and say, okay, you can't really hear the track, but you can hear my horn a lot, or you can't hear my horn, but you can hear the track a lot. They need to go work that stuff out. and they get, There's no reason they can't go practice and do that a thousand times between now and then. It's up to them. Anything else? Hey, Lee, have we given the, the actual dates for the actual audition as far as like the band audition January oh, 23rd? Oh, no, we did I'm sorry. That's, that's pretty big. Yeah. Uh, 
The auditions for the jazz band will be January 16th. Jazz auditions, January, I'll type that in too. Jazz auditions, Saturday, January 16th. Band auditions, Saturday, January 23rd. Choir auditions, Saturday. 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 January thirtieth. Now there one there one or two days. districts. There are one or two districts that are going to do their auditions on a weeknight, the same week as the band as those auditions, though. Yeah. So and then the dis yeah, and then the division chairman have to get us those qualifying kids that they want to send on to the second round on February seventh. And the bands will be announced on Saturday, February 13th in the choir. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, they make sure the district directors are going to be sending us or, the, well, the division chairs the list the, of their district to send on the second round. Jazz, it's all going to be on January 23rd. And I want the, the biggest the reason jazz goes first is because – once I have the jazz band, I can forward the results to Scott to uh, Ronnie, and Ronnie can pull the kids out and send the alternates to um, second round if that happens. All right, Tim says we will have to be late on the 16th. That is our district jazz. Lee? That's your district jazz what honor band you'll have. All right. Tim, you may want to get with Lee on that one. Yeah, just – Email me. We'll talk about it. It's gonna so there'll be different rooms set up. So we're gonna try and knock it out between you know nine and twelve in the morning or something like that. So um, let me know. I don't know which Tim that is. Which Tim are you? <laughs> he says he'll email me. Okay, cool. Hey, I think we're gonna go offline here in just a few minutes. Or so. Thanks to Ronnie. Thanks to Lee. Thanks to everybody. Thanks for being here. Somebody asked about the Allstate Band Clinic. As long as we can have it, would be Friday, right. March 26th cool, through the 28th. Yep. Yeah, if it happens, it'll be in the March. Yep. Let's hope it can happen. Put your fingers gather across them. Are we good? Um, I can't wait. <laughs> I'm excited. So for excited. your second round, so for your second round playoff game. game. No, this ain't a second round playoff game. This is a, oh, we have a football game tonight because the team doesn't have COVID can come play us. But I'm a fortune teller. You'll, you'll end up having one, though. You'll end up having that second round game. No, we haven't won a game. Shh. Yeah, I don't think that they just want that. You don't have to be good. You just they just want your money. You know, I think that's the rule. Okay, go Tigers and who that? I think that's the rule. Bye everybody. <laughs> Thank Bye. You all.